Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, uh, good, uh, good, good afternoon, afternoon everybody. everybody. Uh, those of you that have logged on this, this link, link near the, the, the virtual event, event for coming on. This is a first front, so, so we're going to try this out. I'm excited about the possibility of doing the virtual exhibition missions and online interview interviews, I guess, artists. So just to introduce myself, my name is Zazen and I'm the Associate Professor of Art and Gallery Art at Victoria College. With us today, we have Juan Vinales, who is our first guest of the year. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Juan, let him introduce himself, and we'll go from there. Juan, thank you for joining us. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, Deborah Costner and and uh, her class and Victoria College and <clears throat> everyone who uh, made it possible to allow me to be here and to share my artwork as as uh, it was well presented in the the gallery and, and the students and everybody did a great job setting it up. So thank you all for allowing me to be here and. Uh, a brief introduction of myself. Well, let's see. I uh, the interesting thing about myself, which which I'll I'll mention now and uh, instead of later, perhaps. And if I repeat myself, uh, okay. Uh, I teach here at Texas Tech University, and I've been here since 1995. Prior to Texas Tech University, I was um, I was uh, at Eastern Washington University. But what brought me here was the not a, not necessarily a goal, but uh, a dream. I guess I had was to teach at Texas Tech University. I, I was born in Florida, Texas, which is about forty five miles north of here. And uh, ever since I was in elementary and junior high and high school and so on, all, all of my classmates um, they all used to say that they wanted to go to Texas Tech University and um, and I didn't know where it was and I thought yeah me too I, I have I would love to, to do that you know follow my classmates uh, <clears throat> to this school but uh, just never got the chance and uh, so it worked out because as I mentioned it it, uh, it it made me want to pursue that dream and to teach at a university, not that it was a dream or a goal my entire life, uh, <clears throat> but it worked out that I ended up going to smaller schools. And uh, so never feel like you're at a, at a disadvantage if you go to a smaller school, because I went to the smallest schools around, uh, uh, Clarendon College, for example, small place, and then, uh, which is also north of here, but 40 miles, 45 miles, something like that. And I ended up at uh, Ohio State University where I, where I got my terminal degree. And, um, and then I got my first teaching job out at Eastern Washington University. And in 95, I, I found that this job was available and I, I was so excited and I applied, of course, and then the interview went well and here I am. And uh, so I've been teaching for, let's see, uh, counting the two years as a grad student at Ohio State, uh, we're, I'm pushing about 31, almost going on 32 years, if I did the math correctly. So that's my educational background. Um, my artistic background, uh, of course, uh, involves those universities and, and uh, a few places in between. Uh, <clears throat> but I was, uh, I'm very fortunate and very blessed, actually, to have my artwork published in over 30 books from around the world, mostly uh, here in the U.S., of course, but uh, they include China, Malaysia, Portugal, uh, and Korea, and another, and another place. But anyway, uh, quite a few places, but mostly the U.S., as I mentioned, and, and magazines as well from mm -hmm. Australia to, to... And if I didn't mention China, uh, that's where one of the uh, major book is, is from that... Uh, they don't sell them anymore. They're beautiful books, but uh, I think they've sold. Uh, they're out of print. I've been wanting to get extra copies for uh, to share with students. But anyway, that's and then uh, 
uh, Mart work uh, has been exhibited in a lot of places from around the world as well, but uh, I just like to think that teaching here at this university and living close to where I was born kind of keeps me humble because I remember all the struggles and all the difficult things that I went through to, to get here. So I, uh, I'm actually very, very fortunate and very blessed to, to be able to, to have a, a kind of a vast experience uh, career-wise and, and then look back and remember that uh, all the funny and crazy memories that I have as a child growing up in Florida. Uh, but we, we moved around a lot, and uh, so I hated school. I'll, I'll bring that out. <laughs> I actually hated school because we would move at least twice a year and sometimes three times a year. And uh, we would, my family would follow the, the crops uh, different times of the year. We would be in South Texas. Uh, and then when winter uh, subsided up here in the north, then we ended up back up here to hold cotton, plant onions. And the cycle continued, and perhaps uh, the weirdest cycle I remember was going from South Texas to North Texas to Florida uh, to pick citrus. Anyway, so that's why I hated school, because uh, we would be in school in, for a short time, and then we had to leave. And, uh, you know, making friends was difficult. And then uh, the English language was so tricky for me because we grew up in the, uh, we grew up mostly in rural parts of wherever we lived. So we, it was just our family, literally, that uh, we, we had as company. So uh, my father and his lineage, his great grandfather and, and before that, they all grew up here in the, in, in the, in Texas, they were, they were probably, I think my parents on my dad's side, uh, everybody was here when Texas belonged to Mexico. So they didn't value education as much as my mother. Uh, so what happened was that uh, since uh, my, my father just didn't think education was that important, uh, he wasn't able to, to speak or write in English. And so we had to speak Spanish at home, which made it difficult when I went to school because that's why I was having trouble with the language barriers I mentioned. And, uh, but I slowly, a little bit here and a little bit there, watching the TV, when we finally got a TV, I was actually able to learn English by watching TV <laughs> and, uh, and practicing it that way. So it's a long, uh, and maybe some of this will come in in the discussion with the questions that you sent uh, about my background and uh, how it influenced my artwork and any other things that might come in handy or helpful uh, to other people that might benefit from looking inwards so that they can uh, get to know who they are and then and how that information will shape your artwork. Um, so that's why, to go back, uh, that's why I hated school because we moved around and the language barrier was difficult. But once I overcame that, uh, which was in probably about in junior high, started junior high, towards the end of elementary, uh, I realized how important school really is and was at the time. And because that's when all my friends were talking about college and wanting to go to Texas Tech and and that's why I got to thinking, you know, if I'm going to follow my classmates and want to be like them or aspire to be like their families because they were uh, more well-established and, and, uh, and, and so on, I wanted to be like, emulate them, basically. So I, I realized that, well, I, I guess school is really important. And uh, so that's my background in a nutshell and why in education is important. On, and on that note, uh, one of my favorite quotes is from Louis Pasteur, uh, who says, chance favors only the prepared mind. And everybody as students that are listening to this, and even myself included, uh, we always learn on a daily basis. Um, and that's what you're doing right now is preparing your mind for opportunity. 
And so when opportunity does come, you're, you will be prepared for, um, to take advantage of the, that, that moment or opportunity. Um, I'll, uh, I'll leave the introduction to, uh, to there. And then if you want to ask me some follow-up questions based on what I just shared, or if you want to go into the questions, it's up to you. Well, I definitely think, uh, you know, your background is very interesting and, and in a lot of ways relatable. Um, you know, I know I had a little bit of that growing up, you know, Spanish was my primary language when I was really young and the moving around. Um, I was never a migrant worker, but, uh, you know, I, I do remember a lot of stuff like that from my community as well. So, um, I think it's great that, you know, you're able to pursue all that with your education and, and overcome, you know, the humble beginnings and, and really aspire. So I think that's great and, and very positive for the students to hear, you know, uh, and I agree with you also with going to small schools. I did the same thing, small community colleges, a smaller university for both degrees. So I, I hear you on that one. <clears throat> so, um, well, yeah, I've got a few questions here prepared. Uh, I'll go ahead and just kind of throw them out to you and then I'll go ahead and uh, quiet it on my end. That way you can respond. Feel free to pull up any images if you like, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, so first question, you know, big one, how did you get started in your career as an artist and as an art educator? Okay, good question. I, uh, I started out as, uh, as an artist, uh, you know, our high school did not have art classes at all. And, uh, so I, I actually stumbled into art as an accident or by accident, I should say, um, I, uh, my first classes and, uh, taken art was in, in, at, at my, at Clarendon Junior College. And, and I started, uh, uh, by accident, as I mentioned, I, I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And I thought I would be a pharmacist or a lab technician or work something related to that. I, I guess mainly because I, I knew I couldn't be a doctor. I didn't have the aptitude to be a doctor. I was too squimish about stuff. So I, I, that was too, that was too, uh, too far to reach. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that was because my, my brother, my oldest brother, uh, had leukemia and he passed away a day, literally a day after his 20th birthday. And, and like a lot of people that lose a, a loved one, they want to, uh, pursue a career that would, uh, help their family or loved ones or, or contribute to society in, in some way. And that's one of the reasons why I thought I would possibly be a, a lab technician or, or a pharmacist or something like that to help people. Uh, uh, because of losing my brother, I, I, I wanted to help be a help to society and help other people. And eventually I started taking art classes and then, um, uh, um, before you know it, I had a, a minor and then, and then I, I loved it. <laughs> and, uh, my parents freaked out when I, I told them I was going to be an art major because as most parents, you know, they, they want to know what their kids are doing. And, uh, and they asked me, well, what are you going to do with the art? Uh, I said, well, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I like, I like art. And, uh, and with my classmates, if they were having trouble with uh, the potter's wheel, as an example, or with drawing or whatever we were doing, I would actually help them outside of class. And I thought, you know, I'm actually a pretty good teacher <laughs> because I'm helping my art tutoring or helping my classmates and I'm, and I'm getting good results. And so I thought, why not pursue the, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to be a teacher? And another reason was because I remember when I was in elementary and, and, and other uh, grade levels, we had horrible teachers that, uh, that I, I didn't like and, uh, and I didn't respond to their approach to teaching because it was, it was very abrasive, very, uh, very non um, supportive and the list goes on about negative things of that sort. And I thought I wanted to, if I'm going to be a teacher, I wanted to be everything that these people were, were are not. I didn't want to be like any of these people. I wanted to be a, a, a spot, a positive spot in the classroom with, with students as opposed to these, uh, these folks. So I thought, you know, what, 
what better way to, to get into the classroom so I can do the opposite of what these individuals were, were doing. And uh, so I, I got to thinking that that might be the, the way to go. Um, it was kind of a long journey to be a teacher, though, uh, but not something that's impossible for anyone. Obviously, uh, if I can do it, anybody can. And, uh, and so I, uh, I realized that uh, by, by uh, wanting to be a teacher, uh, I wanted to ask myself some really important questions as to why I wanted to be a teacher besides, you know, okay, having talent to help people. And, uh, and some of those questions uh, I'll maybe answer with some of your other questions that, that, that will come up in the, in the discussion. But uh, one was to help people to understand themselves. Um, I was fortunate enough to take a lot of psychology classes because uh, I just wanted to take them for interest's sake. And uh, by doing so, I, I learned uh, information about myself as, from my kind of a self-discovery. Maybe that's why I was doing it because I was doing some, wanting to do some self-discovery. And, uh, and that'll be a, a topic that I'll bring up later in, in the discussion is self-discovery and uh, self, um, not necessarily analysis, but, but uh, getting to know yourself out simply and, and literally put it, putting it simply that way. But uh, so I, I uh, decided to continue going into that direction of, of being a educator and uh, slowly but surely uh, here I am. So 30, 32 years later. All right. Well, yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, good story with all that. I, I know that that's a thing that a lot of people that get into this field, you know, have in common is that wanting to work with people, wanting to help people, you know, and in a way you're still doing that. Like you said, you know, it's just a different field, but you're still helping people and working with them. So that's awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so, you know, you talked already about your experiences as a, as a migrant worker moving across the country and, and you know, that kind of upbringing uh, that you had. Does any of that influence the work that you make? My biggest influences have always been nature. As I mentioned, I was trying to find some other influences, but the ones that I remember the most, I'll, I'll keep it simple, are the things that I came across in the fields, and that was... Uh, watching the plants grow from, from really small cotton plants to larger cotton plants. And then they would have the flowers and then they would have the bulbs and then the bulbs would open. And so it was that transformation of things is what I was always fascinated by, about. And finding little creatures, animals of whatever kind, from lizards to frogs to birds, rabbits, and so on. And, I, and, and bugs, lots of bugs. And uh, I love their, the, the textures, the colors, the, the designs, the, just the, um, the uh, wide range of, uh, of strange uh, colors and textures on, on different animals and different creatures or bugs. So that was something that I always was fascinated about. And as a kid, I kept the little box. My mother used to do a lot of stitching and uh, she made our, our clothes from time to time and she would make our blankets and things like that. And she would have fragments of, of different materials and, and, and the threads and things like that. And I collected her, some of her fragments and then other fragments that I, had, that I would find in the fields and out in the backyard and then keep them in this box. And then every now and then I would just pull them out and, and just be fascinated with the, the textures, the colors and, and similarities that I just mentioned about things that I would see in the fields. And so that was, looking back, I, I realized that all of that kind of a fun discovery or fun um, ways of, of uh, observing things or, or trying to analyze things uh, was preparing my, 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 my eye and brain coordination, if I can put it that way. Kind of like people say hand and eye coordination, but it was, in this case, eye and brain coordination because I, I was... Uh, preparing my my mental abilities to to understand simple elements of design and and so on. So that's 
in a nutshell or keeping it briefly or simply, uh, that's how my uh, experience is growing up, uh, working out in the fields, 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, it, at minimum, we always had to put in 10 hours and sometimes 12 and usually 12 if it wasn't too hot. Uh, and if it was really hot, then yeah, we would just push it to 10. And, and uh, the hottest I ever remember I've been out in the fields was 114 degrees. I think we got to 117 once, but we didn't stay out there that whole day. Not, we, I don't think we, we might have made eight hours. So those are so some of the fascinating things that I, I remember. And, uh, and I could go on about the connections and the uh, associations with my personal kind of struggle of being out in the fields because there were many. Uh, but maybe some of this information will come up again in, in other, other questions or discussion that we might have. But in, in a manner of speaking, that's what uh, my background as, as a person that was working out in the fields uh, as a young kid, uh, what they helped sh to shape, I'll put it that way. Um, I know one thing I definitely want to want to talk about, specifically the works in the show and, and the title, you know, Bomba y la Tierra. I think that's really interesting. And, and then the images that you have, the pieces that are in there, these almost organic yet mechanical pump-like forms, you know, um, what are some of the ideas that went into that specifically? Those pieces uh, that are in the show, the images that are that, that are shown in the exhibition, the the drawings. Um, I start out that way. Uh, start off by drawing uh, shapes that, to me, uh, relate to landscape. Um, the the different shapes of the the land that I've seen, literally, uh, from traveling from one part of the country to the other. Uh, for example, up here, we live in pretty flat region, even in Oklahoma and perhaps parts of Colorado, except you get to the Rockies. And, and uh, so as a kid uh, growing up, uh, we would literally see the landscape change from flat to mountainy to back to flat, perhaps, uh, because that's how farmland works. And uh, so uh, a lot of those uh, drawings are in relationships to to landscapes and i know people see them as as organs and specifically the heart they'll say oh those are heart shapes and i'll say well yeah they're sort of like heart shapes but they're not really hearts they're you know they're landscape they're uh they're things of things of that nature uh being you know terraces and uh different shapes of the landscape that, that i recall and uh, so people ask me why I make organs, and I thought, you know, that's an interesting question. And I and I and I dug into myself as to why I make these shapes that look like organs, and it's because they are connected to our organs. Uh, so definitely want to move on to what I feel is a really important question. Um, you know, for students, anybody that's going to be watching this, interested in the arts. What is the best advice you want to offer, you can offer to any student who is interested in pursuing a career in the visual arts? Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's a, that's a good question. And uh, I'll try to be as, as thorough as possible. Uh, well, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about the, the how to do uh, self-discovery or self-analysis. Uh, or self uh, uh, self uh, oh, what's the word well basically self analysis and, and that's something that that will happen and it kind of relates to the quote that I uh, I enjoy sharing about Louis Pasteur when he said that chance only favors the prepared mind and that's what everyone uh, students and anyone that uh, is pursuing art and that's what you're doing is you're you're preparing yourself for opportunity. And so by preparing yourself for opportunity is you get a chance to learn about yourself. And uh, there's, there's a wonderful uh, video uh, 
titled uh, The Hero's Journey, and it's an interview and uh, uh, kind of a documentary of uh, with uh, Joseph Campbell that I would highly recommend uh, because uh, that's I share that with my, my students. And, and he talks a lot about these, these similar questions that you've been asking and these similar concepts that we've been talking about. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's about an hour long video, but I've seen it many, many times because I've shared it with my students for, for over 15 years. And I, I watch it two or three times a year, if not more. Uh, but he, uh, he, uh, he basically says that you should follow your bliss and, uh, and then he sh you should get to know who you are in a manner of speaking. Uh, and my background, as I've been sharing with you through some of these questions, is, is, uh, is a way that I got to know who I, my background, how I grew up, how I see the world, how I understand the world, and how I see myself fitting into the, into the world. And uh, it's basically a gestalt. And uh, by getting to know who you are, you'll, you'll realize how important an individual is, any individual is. You're as unique as, an, and, and, uh, as, you're as, unique as your thumbprint, basically. There's nobody on this earth that, that is like you. Um, you're, as, you're that unique. And so you see the world in a very unique manner. Sure, we have some uh, similarities. We, we have to rest, we have to sleep, we have to eat, we have to breathe, and so on. We have uh, simple body functions that, that are human, but uh, uh, what it comes down to is the fact that, uh, that we, as human beings, uh, have something to, to share, and that is our perspective or our, our, uh, the way we see the world. And that's what I try to pursue in my artwork is, is how I see the world and how, what, what's important from my perspective that I, and whatever observations I may be uh, uh, enjoying at the time and then want to share. And I would hope that students will also uh, ask themselves some simple questions about who they are, where they come from, how they see the world, the gestalt, this idea of gestalt. And, uh, and that's and that word, if you look it up, it basically says that the complex interconnections of of a, of a certain situation, place, or thing. Um, I, I, I'm, don't quote me on that. I have to look up the the term. Uh, but it, it's it's a collection of information that makes you who you are. I'll put it that way. And so by by doing that, then uh, you get a chance to share from an individual's perspective, your gestalt, the way, again, you see the world, the way you understand things, the way uh, you pursue information seeking. And, uh, and by, by doing that, uh, then, then you're sharing things that are very uniquely yours from your vantage point. And like I said, Picasso, when he said, uh, uh, everything you can imagine is real Every child is an artist, and the problem is uh, how to remain an artist uh, once growing up. So uh, he's, you know, he's trying to encourage, just like Joseph Campbell, is encourage uh, people to pursue them themselves in, as an individual because nobody saw the world or sees the world like the way you, you see it, the way you grow up the way you understand things, the way you, uh, you uh, dis, uh, decipher information or un what's the word? Well, analyze information, the way you, you particularly analyze information. So all of, all of this information seeking and, uh, and, and analysis of, of, of information all of that becomes yours in the way you've collected it and then the way you transform that information into art, uh, art objects or paintings or, or uh, even art experiences. Because, uh, for example, music is, is an experience that you can hear and enjoy. That's also art. And uh, we as humans, uh, if we can just basically tell ourselves that art is a universal language, 
And, uh, you know, I'm sure if you were to share uh, a sculpture or a painting or music uh, to anybody on the on any part of the world, they would understand it. And uh, it would mean differently to different cultures and different people, of course, but but it's still uh, a way of communicating. And that's all we're, we as human beings want to do is communicate our our from our lives and our background. And, uh, and I would hope that people can, can tell themselves and remind themselves that they are very, very important to this uh, fabric of, of humanity, that we all have something important to share and to say and to impart with our fellow human beings um, in whatever kind of art form. Uh, drama is another art form, of course, literature, and the list goes on. And so uh, one of the things that is, as young students or anybody any, at any age uh, should remember also is that it's never too late to learn and to uh, figure out what, what it is that you want to, to do in your life, artistically speaking, or it might take, you may start off as an artist and then end up as a scientist. I was reading an article today about a, about a Chicano artist well, he started out as an artist, and he did become a doctor. And he's actually a pretty well-known doctor now who's helping to lead the fight with this uh, COVID-19 situation that's going on. And he, he's one of the very few uh, kind of, uh, doctors that, that are working uh, with therapies, uh, with helping people. So, so again, that, that goes back to what I was saying in my own background is the way you start off doesn't mean that that's how you're going to end up but you could you could start off as a scientist and end up as an artist or you could be an artist and end up as a scientist or a doctor etc but something to 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 always ask yourself is what what, what do you want to do with your life in in, in art uh do you want to uh, be an educator and if so, then pursue everything that, that you can to be the best educator you can. If you want to be a visual artist, and there, the field is very, very wide open for, for that perspective, from industrial art to uh, conceptual art to scientific illustrations, and, and the list goes on. Um, and so individuals need to ask themselves what what is it that's driving them to want to be in art and and then pursue to the best of your abilities uh in that direction and and joseph campbell talks about that and he also makes an an, a, an example about uh about how he sees art and uh and one of the persons that he interviewed or influenced actually joseph campbell <laughs> influenced a, a lot of people from scientists to, to philosophers to psychiatrists, psychologists, and of course, filmmakers like George Lucas. And, uh, and there's another interview that I, I would recommend to any student or anybody. Uh, and it's uh, the, uh, I'll have to, I can't remember, I can see it, but I can remember it's a, it's an interview with uh, George Lucas and and how he how he was influenced by Joseph Campbell. He talks about how important Joseph Campbell was in his work, and 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 it, it all comes back to self analysis or self awareness about who you are as a person, as a potential educator, artist, and the list goes on. But by knowing yourself as best as you can then you'll understand what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what, uh, what your, the, the, the amazing things that you may have that are hidden that you can share visually, et cetera, as an individual. And, and, and it comes down to just being able to, 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 to do that is, is to be self-aware of, of what it is that's important to you. And like I said, there's nobody that grew up like you, saw the world like you, and understands the world like you. And by by trying to, to make connections, uh, <clears throat> then you'll have 
information to, to, to look at and create whatever it is that you want to create, whether it's music, literature, art, etc. Discoveries. <laughs> And that's, in a nutshell, that's how I would, I would, uh, there's a process, I'll, I'll, without getting too, too deep into it, because I know we're short on time, but a lot of times people think they understand how it is to, uh, to, to think in a creative way. Uh, one of the best ways to, to think creatively is, one, remind yourself that as long as you don't hurt anybody and as long as you don't hurt yourself um, and that's why Picasso said everything you see everything you can imagine is real so if you can see it imagine it create it and share it then you'll be able to to be a successful artist and uh, and and by uh, by doing what's called mind mapping and I wish I had a chance to show you guys how to do that um, you're, you're basically uh, starting off with topics breaking down those topics those topics yield other words those words yield a list of information before you know it you've got a stream of consciousness that allows you to see uh, your way of thinking your way of, of reasoning and your way of understanding and the way of, of making connections and how those connections relate to you and your ideas and how to create then successful artwork. And not to say that uh, I've created some work that I thought was, was not going to be something that I was going to pursue or be successful. I tried to give away those samples of artworks that I was just playing around and as, as uh, demos. Nobody wanted them because they weren't very successful, let's say. Uh, I took them again and did some other demos on them, uh, like image transfer on them, for as example, and they got into books. <laughs> and I was trying to give those works away. So don't, so never feel that that you can create artwork that are not going to be successful or, or not successful. You don't know, and no one really knows until you you, you do it. Uh, so. So my advice is to, to create and not be afraid to create, whether you, you create something that's horrible that you may think is horrible or you may think is not as successful because by doing these exercises of creation, it helps you to, to, to find the, the veins of works that perhaps are more successful. My little analogy of that is be, pretend you're in a dark room, the lights are off, and one, you're going to be afraid to move, or you're going to, or you're going to be brave to try to find the walls, the corners of the walls. Eventually, find the light switch, and then you'll be able to turn on the light switch and see what, see where you're at. If you don't move and you stay there, then that's what's going to happen. You're just not going to be uh, active, and, and you're going to be stuck in a in a dark room. Same thing with art. You got to keep moving. You got to keep creating, and through trial and error, uh, you'll people will be successful. Same thing with that applies to science, and that applies to any field. Uh, so uh, pursue to the best of your ability what you're capable of doing. Uh, my grandfather he used to say some of the simplest smart things, uh, didn't have any education of any kind that I remember from my mother. Uh, but he said, if, he's, if you're going to be a ditch digger, you be the best ditch digger there is. And, uh, and if you're going to be whatever field that you choose to be in, then you pursue the best that you can to be the best that you can in that field. I hope that makes sense. I, I uh, kind of chopped it up a little bit, but I'm, I'm hoping that people can make connections enough to where it all comes to some sort of uh, enlightening information. Oh yeah, good advice. Um, definitely agree with you on, on all of that. You know, definitely something I've always tried to impress upon my students as well. 
uh, as far as, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do to do it to the best of your ability, you know, really hone your craft, take the time to, you know, develop your skill set, whatever that may be. So good stuff. Good, good stuff. Uh, Juan, I uh, definitely want to thank you for joining us today and for thank exhibiting you, at Tri uh, College. Um, um, really appreciate, really appreciate it. it. And, and we'll go ahead and end it there. Okay.